All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our uh, Summer Kids Club here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And hello to all of my Squid Squad. I hope you have been having a fantastic time uh, learning uh, all about so many things uh, this weekend. We're excited to have you join us here on Friday. Uh, so my name is Talia. I'm from our education department. Um, and today we're going to be learning about a really cool animal. And there is a hint of who that is behind me. Have you guessed it? We're going to be learning all about penguins this morning, so we're so excited to have you join us here. Um, now, if you have any questions, any observations uh, during our time here, you're welcome to text in your questions to us live. Um, so there is a number on your screen. It's right below me, right down there. Um, you can text us at 562-286-1838. Again, that's 562-286-1838. Or if you're not watching this live uh, on Friday, you can email us. So you can email us as well at live at lbaop.org. So those are two ways to interact with us uh, this morning. Um, so Squid Squad, let's try to figure out, first off, what makes a penguin a penguin? So I'm going to let you make some observations. This is actually our uh, webcam of our exhibit, penguin exhibit we have here at the aquarium. So I'm going to let you make some observations first. Uh, and let's try to see if we can figure out what makes penguin a penguin hmm. so I notice a couple of things um, I notice that they have a really long mouth it's a little hard to see from from this far away but they also have something special about their skin hmm so do they have skin like us? Mm -mm. Uh, what about like a fish? Nah. So they actually have feathers on their body as well. Here's a great picture. I'm going to go, let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand right here because I'm not in the way of the picture. Cool. Thanks, Allie. Um, by the way, I have some friends helping me out here. So Miss Allie is changing um, all the pictures behind me. Miss Stacy is at a computer and she will be uh, helping get your questions to me during this uh, program as well. So can you see all the feathers on my penguin here? Now, this probably doesn't quite look um, like the feathers you might think about uh, on a bird that flies, right? So that's one of the interesting things about penguins is they're a bird, but they don't fly. Um, so normally birds that fly, their feathers are different sizes and different shapes that allow them, they have what's called like called flight feathers that actually help them. Oh, thank you. Like a lorikeet here. Um, and they're all their feathers are different sizes and shapes. And some of those are a shape that allows them to fly. Now let's get back to our penguin. And do you notice it almost looks kind of scaly, right? So all their feathers are the same size and shape. They're all short, um, short this way, and then they're white this way. Uh, and that allows them to have them really, really closely packed together. A penguin can have 70 feathers in a square inch. If you make a little circle with your hand, that circle you just made um, is about an inch across. So, and an inch across this way and an inch across this way. So in just that little space, a penguin can have 70 feathers. Isn't that amazing? Um, so that allows them to keep nice and warm as well. So they don't have blubber, a big thick layer of fat uh, to help them keep warm in the cold water where some of them live. Um, they don't have a scarf. They don't have mittens. Uh, so they have the, the lots and lots of feathers to help them keep warm. They're kind of locking together to help keep the water out, which is pretty cool. Ooh, somebody is asking a question, a great question actually. Are penguins black and white for camouflage? That's a great question. So did you notice something interesting about where the black and the white is on a penguin. So you can see with this picture that there's kind of a darker color on the back, but there's a lighter color on their belly. Ooh, here's another great example of that. So we have a dark back here. I'm gonna get really, I'm not good at my backwards pointing today. There. <laughs> they have a dark back, but look at their belly over here. So their belly um, is white. And that's a type of camouflage called counter shading. So that means that they're blending in both ways. So when you're looking down at a penguin, um, it's blending with the dark depths 
of the ocean. But if you're looking up at a penguin, it's blending with all the sunlight that's coming down. So it helps them blend, a, blend in if you're looking at the bottom or if you're looking at the top of a penguin. So yeah, you are absolutely right. The penguin can be black and white for camouflage, especially if they're dark on one side and they're light on the other side. Um, you might have also noticed with our magic, actually this guy, um, that's okay. Um, I can do it with this one too. So you might also notice some animals have these extra kind of patterns uh, on their heads or whatnot. Sometimes that also helps break up their outline as well. You'll see this with fish as well. And that helps them um, kind of, uh, it's, it's a little harder to tell where the animal begins and where the animal ends. So that's another way that they can camouflage with those patterns on their body. That's a great, great question. Uh, while we're on the subject of feathers, because it is the one thing that makes a bird a bird, and a penguin is a bird, even though it doesn't fly, um, let's take a closer look at some feathers. So I'm gonna go walk over here to my document camera. I have some feathers uh, ready for you. Ta-da! So this is what their feathers look like. I think these might be, these might be the grown-up feathers. We, I couldn't remember if these were grown-up feathers or baby feathers. Um, but penguins actually change their feathers. Can you see they're all pretty small? Um, as they grow up. So a lot of times uh, they look very different when they're babies uh, versus when they're grown-ups. Ours kind of get a nice silvery gray and they don't have that typical black and white pattern. Uh, to their body when they're babies, but when they get about a year old, they go through their first molt. So they actually change out all their feathers and get nice shiny new ones. And that's when they get that black and white pattern to their body. Uh, Miss Allie, do we have, um, I think there's a picture with some grown-ups and some babies. I think they might be emperor penguins. Maybe. Ooh, here's some babies. These are some baby Magellanic penguins. You can see they look way a little bit different. Um, then the black and white we saw earlier when we were looking at, at the side of the penguin there. So this is what they, ah, this is what I was thinking of. So these are some emperor penguins. These ones live in snow and you can just see they look way different when they're babies. These are the giant babies here that are kind of more of a gray color. You can see they're starting to get their black and white in on top of their head. Um, and then these are the, there we go. These are the grownups here. Much more typical penguin pattern, right? You got the black and the white. You even got some yellow here, too. So not all penguins are completely black and white, which is pretty cool. Um, now, you might say, mm, I don't know. I don't know if this kind of gray is going on, you know, pretty well um, up close, right? Because you're like, I can tell that's a penguin. I don't know if that's helping them hide. But look in the back. Is it harder to tell the farther back we go where the penguin is? and where the ice is. So it does help them kind of blend in a little bit to their surroundings, even though they don't have that black and white camouflage we were talking about earlier. Ooh, um, so we have some more questions coming in. Ooh, so Emmy uh, uh, is asking, um, do penguins eat special treats like dog food? Oh my goodness. So um, they definitely do have, I think some, some favorite foods. They do like to eat fish and squid. So here at the aquarium, we feed them two types of fish. Um, we feed them herring, which is kind of a big, a big meaty, kind of a meaty fish. You can think about it like, like your steak. Uh, we have another smaller fish called a capelin, which is kind of like your chicken. Uh, and then we have squid and squid is a really watery. It's kind of like if you like to eat salad or lettuce, that's kind of what I think about when I think, especially iceberg lettuce, where it's like a lot of water content to it. Um, or celery even. Um, that's kind of what I think of when I think about squid. So definitely I think there's some penguins here at the aquarium that like one versus the other. Sometimes they're like, mm, I, I only want my herring today. I only want my cape today. Sometimes it's like, well, I definitely don't want my squid today. Um, so yeah, I think they definitely um, like certain foods better than others. I don't know if they have, have a treat like a dog treat. Um, although I do know sometimes our penguins, they get special, special activities to do. Um, that you can kind of think of like a treat. So I know sometimes they've played with bubbles. Uh, sometimes we, we, if you've ever had like a, a, a cat a toy app on your iPad, like that you could chase a mouse around, we've, we've had a penguin uh, play with that as well. So they do get special treats here at the aquarium. I don't know so much about special 
special food treats, but sometimes we do. I know sometimes we give like our seals and our sea lions uh, get some jello every once in a while. That's just more color. It's not, it's not, maybe we put some squid juice in it, but, but it's not like cherry flavor or anything like that. But yeah, they definitely do get uh, some special treats in terms of activities as well. That's a great question. I have one uh, more question from, from Jogi. Ooh, Jogi's asking an excellent question. Why can't penguins fly, right? They're birds. So uh, some of it, it has to do with the way that their wings are. So their wings aren't built like a bird that flies, right? It doesn't have those special long feathers. Their wings have been um, adapted more for swimming, right? They look more like a flipper, like a sea lion. Um, so their wings aren't really built for them to fly. Um, they're built more for swimming. So that's why penguins, penguins can't fly. They can definitely, it looks like they're flying underwater. They're really good at kind of flapping their, their flippers like this. And it does kind of, ooh, thank you, Miss Allie. So let's look at them swim. It kind of, they have the same motions kind of like they're flying. Uh, but they're just underwater. So I think that's super cool. That's a great question. Their bones are also a little bit heavier. Um, so it's, uh, there um, a lot of birds that fly, they have hollow bones, which makes them lighter, makes them easier to get into the air. Um, penguins have a little bit heavier bones. Uh, and so that's why it's a little bit, they're not really built m more so for flying. They're built more so for swimming instead. Um, their feet are also built more for swimming too. So they have uh, kind of webbing in between their feet as well. If you notice you have webbing kind of in between your fingers um, or maybe oh thank you or maybe you've seen the duck duck feet their feet are built more for swimming uh, instead of kind of for gripping as much they kind of waddle a little bit as well that's an excellent question thank you guys so much for sharing your observations with us this morning so let's see we talked about feathers that's definitely one thing that makes a bird a bird Penguins are birds. Uh, they look at their beak too. So this guy's got a beak right, right there. Um, and beak is another thing that makes a bird a bird. So our penguins' beaks, um, they're a little bit long. Um, and you can tell a little bit about what a penguin eats by looking at that beak. So ours are kind of pretty long. Uh, bah, right there. They are great for eating fish and squid. Um, they actually have little spines on the inside, almost like little forks that'll help them catch on to that slippery fish and say, aha, you are my breakfast today. Uh, and then they also want to try to juggle the fish around until it's head first. So it's a little bit easier to swallow as well. They're pretty cool about catching uh, their fish. And I think sometimes on our webcams, you can see them during feeding time as well. So I think it's amazing. You'll have, you know, something with you know, not the biggest head in the world, not the biggest mouth in the world. They're going to get big fish and go rop, 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 all the way down. It almost looks like, have you ever seen <laughs> like a sword swallower? That's almost what it looks like. Sometimes like, I don't see how this fish could fit in this tiny little mouth, but they definitely do it. And they have a really strong stomach because uh, they're not chewing their food. So they have a really strong stomach to help them break down that fish inside uh, to make breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, so their beak helps them eat fish and squid. For at least our penguins that we have here, if you have a, a penguin with a shorter beak, uh, think more like um, like a puffin or I'm trying to think of a penguin with a short beak, like maybe like a rockhopper penguin. I don't know if you have a good, ooh, thank you. Um, so you have a shorter beak like this. Some penguins have beaks that look more like our puffin friend here. Um, they're gonna be eating more little shrimp, little krill. Um, that's a little bit more kind of what that, that beak is meant for. And then our, our puffins can also eat uh, lots and lots of little fish as well. Ooh, I got some more questions coming in. Ooh, why do macaroni penguins have horn-like feathers on their head? And that's from Keaton. Hello, Keaton. Thank you for joining us this morning. So, um, macaroni penguins have those cool yellow feathers on their head. I don't know if we have a picture of that, but it's really similar to my puffin friend over here. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the purpose of those feathers. I'm going to guess that it might have something to do um, with kind of showing off that they're a nice, healthy penguin. I got a thumbs up from Miss Allie here. Um, so thank you, my friends, for helping me out here in the studio. So I'm going to think that if they have some nice, awesome yellow feathers, kind of like a really cool hairdo, it helps them show off to other penguins, hey, 
I'm a pretty cool, healthy penguin, um, and you should maybe you should hang out with me. So yeah, I think that's why macaroni penguins have those kind of cool feathers on the side of their head. Um, and I, a lot of penguins will, uh, I think, change their feather. I know a puffins definitely do. Um, sometimes they'll change the feathers a little bit too to be like, ooh, look at me. I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty awesome penguin. Um, Shinja is asking, how big do emperor penguins get? And how big was the biggest one? Ooh, Shinja, that is a great, 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 great question. So emperor penguins are super duper big. Um, they are about four feet tall. So that's a little shorter than me. That's maybe about, that's probably going to come up to probably almost my shoulder or so. About four feet tall. I am not sure about the biggest one ever. So um, I'd say maybe, maybe a little bit taller than four feet. We're not 100% sure. But yeah, maybe, maybe about me sized. <laughs> maybe the biggest one ever but yeah there is definitely some super duper big penguins i think the king penguin uh gets a little bit bigger than the emperor penguin too which looks very similar uh, they're just a little bit different in the in the patterns as well that's a great 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 question um so we've talked about feathers we talked about beaks um let's talk a little bit about their eggs as well because we got some baby penguins behind there how did they come about so penguins lay eggs just like other birds do um, here are some cool pictures of baby penguins. So, this is baby egg. And here's either mama or dad a penguin. And there's an egg by his feet. And then you, what we sometimes we can do, and you might know this from chicken eggs too, is you can shine a light behind them and you can see what's going on inside without having to, you know, open the egg or harm the egg, because you wouldn't want to do that if there's a baby inside, right? You want to keep it in the egg until it's ready to be born. Um, so they will actually take turns taking care of the egg. Isn't that cool? Um, so at least for their Magellanic penguins, they take about, I want to say, about 30, 40 days uh, to raise their egg, and they'll take turns. So um, I forget who goes first, but somebody hangs out with the egg for about 20 days, and then mom goes get food comes back and then they swap. So dad will take second shift, mom will get food, come back and they help raise their baby, which is super cool. Now, um, this marfan is just kind of sitting on the egg to keep warm. Now you wouldn't want to do that in the ice and the snow, right? Um, so uh, the penguins that live in the ice and the snow, they, and you might notice, wait a minute, do all penguins live in ice and snow? Because if you look at this penguin over here, um, there's no ice and snow there. You didn't see any ice and snow on an exhibit either, right? So they live in different habitats, but the ones that do live in ice and snow, you don't want to put your egg on the snow, right? Because it would freeze. It would get like an ice cube. So the papa penguins will actually use their feet like a little nest. So they'll put the egg on their feet and then they'll take their feathers and go whoop like a little blanket and put it over the egg and they'll walk a little funny and hold on to that egg. Um, so the egg doesn't get on the ground and turn into an ice cube. And that's how they keep the baby safe uh, in the ice and the snow. Ooh, Jackson is asking, can we share some fun facts about Adelie penguins? We sure can, Jackson. So um, I see Miss, ooh, they're so adorable. They're pretty awesome. Um, they are, um, can be in really, really big colonies. So the largest colony ever had over 180,000 nests in it. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can't imagine that. 180,000 penguins all hanging out in the one spot. Uh, they're also small and they are feisty. So they have some, some big personality for being, for being a little penguin. So that's some fun facts about our Adelie penguin. I actually just learned something cool about the Adelie penguin and I was getting ready for this class this morning. So the person who discovered the Adelie penguin, his wife's name was Adele and that's who he named the penguin after. I think that's pretty adorable. So that's my fun fact about an Adelie penguin. Sam and Reese are asking, why do their noses look like two dots? Ooh. That's an interesting question. You might be, I wonder if you noticed, um, well, so, so this picture over here, if that's what you're referring to, is just looking at it this way. So I think you're noticing kind of the shine on the other sides of the beak. Uh, you might have also noticed, I think they have a salt gland as well. If you've noticed two little holes on their beak, um, Sometimes they'll um, they'll get all the salt out of the water and it'll come out their nose. So I don't know if I can see it. Oh, I am really bad at backwards pointing. I apologize. Somewhere over here, 
there's a little hole. And they'll kind of go like, that's it! And, uh, and they'll get all the salt out of their nose. Ooh, more questions come in, and I love it! Uh, Joshua is asking, do penguins live in the North Pole as well as the South Pole? Ooh, Joshua, that is a great question, because sometimes we see cartoons or, or whatnot of, like, penguins and polar bears hanging together. So, I want you to take a look at this map over here. It's a map of our world. Um, so we're over here. Let's just show what we are. We are... Da, 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 da. Ooh, Long Beach is kind of... There. Um, and do you notice where all the blue is? So all the blue is where penguins live. Hmm. So you might... If you make kind of a line along the center of the Earth, that's the equator. And all the penguins, except for like that little group right, right there, that little dot... Um, they're going to be living below the equator. So that means if you're looking at the poles, you're only going to be finding penguins in the South Pole. So not up top here in the North Pole, but you're going to find them in the South Pole. Uh, but you're going to find them all the way from the equator, where it's pretty warm, all the way down to the South Pole. So I think that's something super interesting about penguins, is that you can find them not just in the ice the snow. I think there's only three species of penguin that are specific to ice and snow. And then the rest live uh, along the coast. You can see here in Africa, uh, there's an African penguin that's really similar to our, gonna turn, there we go, uh, to our uh, Magellanic penguins we have here at the aquarium. Uh, our Magellanic penguins live in South America. So they live all along this blue strip here, down around the corner to these little islands here as well. Um, so they can live in the ice and the snow. They can live on the beach. Um, some of them, like the, the little blue penguin who lives more towards uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, they live along the coast. They also live almost in like little forests as well. And they're super cute. They're like that big. And they're like, yay, <laughs> that big. And look how blue they are. So um, not all penguins are black and white or yellow or orange. Some of them are the super cool navy blue. So this is called a fairy penguin or a little blue penguin. And they live in Australia and New Zealand. You can see definitely see in this picture new ice and snow. So you got rocks, you got plants, you got all sorts of things that maybe you don't expect when you think about penguins. Uh, Ella is asking why do they have different feathers? Ooh, why do they have different feathers when they're babies, right? So um, the, the baby feathers, we call it down. Um, they are going to help keep uh, the penguin kind of nice and cozy warm. Uh, but they're also going to help them blend in in a different way when they're adults, right? So um, here, it's so fuzzy and cute. So that's going to help them keep warm when they're babies. And then it's going to help them blend in uh, in their home a little bit more. And then when they are adults, they want to kind of, they're going to be a lot more active. They're going to be out swimming. So their feathers are going to look a little bit different to help them blend in with the new places they're exploring, right? So that's a little bit about why they have different feathers when they're babies. Ella, excellent question. Everett is asking, how long can they hold their breath? Ooh, Everett, excellent question. So emperor penguins can hold their breath for 20 minutes. Oh my goodness, that would be almost like if you held your breath during an entire cartoon. That's that's how long they can hold their breath. I don't recommend it. We're not emperor penguins, so. Uh, but yeah, that's a super long, that's almost as long as a whale can hold his breath. That's amazing. Um, so that's an excellent question, ever. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. So we've, I think we covered most of the things that makes a bird a bird. Um, we did a really good job being really thorough with that today. So they have feathers, they have beaks, they have eggs. We talked about where they live. Um, and we talked a little bit um, about their adaptations. You were learning a little bit about adaptation, I think, yesterday with our wiggly squiggly clash about uh, our invertebrates that we have uh, out in the ocean and here at the aquarium. So uh, penguins have some pretty cool adaptations as well. Remember, they have that camouflage with their feathers. They have those flippers to help them uh, help them swim rather than fly. They have those that little spines in their beak. So those are some of the adaptations that help out our penguins. Ooh, we were talking about penguins on rocks. These are, are these chin strap penguins, Miss Allie? Do you know? Galapagos penguins. So these ones live in, um, I should have looked at the habitat. That would have helped me out a little bit more. Like, wait a minute. Um, so these are Galapagos penguins and you can see they're like on little rocks. Uh, they like to hop as well. Um, so they'll hop from rock to rock to rock to rock, which is super cool. 
So, um, say again. You found a big, ooh, Miss Allie found a picture of the spikes. Ooh, that's a fantastic, ooh, my goodness, that's a fantastic, that's a fantastic picture. Do you see all the little spines inside their beak? Were you expecting that when the pink one opened its mouth? Oh my goodness. So those are the little, like the little spines, the little forks that are in their mouth that help them catch on to those slippery fish. I think I got all the questions, Miss, Miss, Miss Stacy. Cool. You guys are excellent with your questions. Thank you, Squid Squad, for, uh, for stepping up and uh, keeping me on my toes this morning. Ooh, Reeves is asking, how well can a penguin see underwater? That is a great question. So they can, s the penguins are actually really cool. They can see pretty well both under the water and on land. And uh, the reason they can do that so well is their eye muscles are really, really strong. So normally, um, like a fish, their, uh, their eyes are designed to be in the water. Uh, our eyes are designed to see pretty well in, in the air, right? So if you've ever been in a swimming pool and you've opened your eyes under and it's like, ooh, I don't know if I can see as well. It's a little bit blurry. So that's why you might see better if you bring goggles with you because you're bringing a little bit of a layer of air in front of your eyes. And that's why you can see a lot better sometimes in a swimming pool when you're wearing goggles versus when you're not. That's a great question. So yeah, penguins can see pretty well both on land and under the water, but that makes sense, right? They have to find their food under the water, uh, and they have to find, uh, you know, their family, uh, their friends out in the air. They have to keep an eye out. A lot of times you see a penguin's kind of looking up like this, going, hmm, I want to make sure everything's okay. You have to keep an eye out for predators uh, as well. Ooh, and then uh, Contra is asking, what is the smallest penguin? And I believe that is the fairy penguin. We were talking about earlier the little blue penguins so these guys uh are the ones that live in australia i want to say they're they're like two feet smaller yeah okay that was like that seems big so they're pretty small there we have a statue at the aquarium that's probably about like like that tall it they're pretty pretty tiny they're actually about as big as this picture <laughs> uh but yeah they that is the smallest penguin is the little blue penguin uh, or, or the fairy penguin that lives in New Zealand. So yeah, I think if um, if there was one next to me, it's probably going to be below my knee. So yeah, they're a pretty, pretty, pretty small penguin. They're pretty adorable though too. I love the blue uh, on them as well. Um, so I have been so excited that we've been learning so much uh, about penguins. Um, we do have penguins, our penguins here at the aquarium. We have about 20 penguins here at the aquarium. They're Magellanic penguins. Um, and they uh, actually, uh, the first group uh, was a rescue group that came from uh, Brazil, and then we've gotten some from different, uh, different facilities uh, as well. Uh, and then a lot of our penguins now are our own babies too. So we get, uh, we'll get uh, kind of a handful of babies uh, every year. We talked about molting season, which is uh, when they change their feathers out for new feathers. And then we also have breeding season uh, as well. So that I think, um, that's going to be coming up next spring. Uh, we're going to have malting season coming soon. So it's, it's going to be pretty, pretty fun to watch the exhibit because it's going to, we noticed, I think a little bit earlier this morning that our, some of our penguins were already starting to kind of lose their feathers, uh, in their, in their, um, kind of around their head. It kind of starts like looking like they're, uh, they're having a bad hair day for a little bit and you're like, mm, my feathers aren't quite right because their old feathers are literally being pushed out by their new feathers. Uh, and normally when you're a, f a bird that flies, you're, you're just gonna, I'm gonna lose a feather here, I'm gonna lose a feather there, and I'm gonna slowly replace my feathers over time. Um, but penguins, they lose their feathers all over the course of a couple of weeks. So uh, they actually bulk up beforehand because when they're losing all their feathers, they're not waterproof anymore. They can't go in the water like this penguin behind me uh, and go get food. So they eat a whole bunch of food beforehand and they bulk up. They get a, kind of a nice big fat star. If you've learned about bears hibernating, it's really similar uh, to that, at least in terms of eating a whole bunch of food and then relying on that uh, big amount of fat store that you've, you've built up uh, for your energy during this period of time. Uh, and then they will um, sit on the beach and have a bad hair day. It'll go from having a bad hair day to looking like our penguins have been having the giantest pillow fight in the world. I think some of our, our aquarists have, have tried to stuff a pillow <laughs> with all the penguin feathers they collect over this over this season. They'll get beautiful new uh, feathers and it'll look really snazzy. Uh, and then in the spring, 
I will have our breeding season as well. So we'll see what happens next spring. That'll be really exciting. Ooh, I have one more question from Emmy and Joshua. Do penguins have enemies? Ooh, that's a good question. So some predators of penguins, I would say sometimes uh, when they're babies, they're little ones, they have to watch out for birds that might try to get them. There's a big bird called a skua that will sometimes get, get baby penguins. Um, when they're grown-ups, sometimes they have to watch out for leopard seals. Uh, I'm thinking more of like my ice and snow friends. Uh, and they might be going after grown-up penguins. Uh, they might also have to watch out for orca whales as well. So those are some, some predators uh, of penguins that they might have to watch out for if they're a baby. Or if they're a grown-up, that's an excellent question. Thank you so much. So I think we are just about out of time. Now, the fun doesn't stop when our class stops here. We have a take-home activity for you. So if you want to continue making those excellent observations, if you uh, look at the link below this video, uh, you should be able to uh, click on to our take-home activity. Um, and it's all about making those observations. So we encourage you to look at our webcams, at our penguin exhibit. Um, and... Uh, um, we uh, can make observations about above the water and under the water as well. And I have one last question from um, um, Adelie. It says, where do fairy penguins get their name? Oh, that's an excellent question. So fairy penguins get their name because they're so small, like a little fairy. So that's where they get their name from. That's a fantastic question. I don't think they have magical powers. I actually haven't asked one. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's because they're so small. That's why. That's why they get their name. Um, so... I encourage you guys to check out that Hey Home activity. Continue making those excellent observations. And we have more classes for you next week. So if you come back next week on Monday at the same time, Squid Squad, uh, I believe you are all going to be learning about crustaceans, our little crab friends. Uh, so that'll be something fun to check out. So thank you guys so much for exploring penguins with us this morning. Uh, and we'll see you uh, next week. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend.